Most assume that they have the world's best mother of all time, but of course they can't all be right. However, while many mothers might get nominated by their offspring for the title of best ever, some mothers clearly don't belong anywhere near that list. Below are 20 things about some of history's worst mothers. Number 15. Irene undoes iconoclasm and mutilates her son. Irene's husband became Emperor Leo the 4th, but died soon there after leaving the empire to his son, the child emperor Constantine the 6th with Irene as regent. After consolidating her power, Irene set about undoing the preceding decades of iconoclasm with all the tenacity and enthusiasm of a religious zealot. In her determination to let nothing stand in the way of her religious mission, Irene rode roughshod over the icon class including her own son. Irene began by calling a call to church council in 786 and packed it with opponents of iconoclasm and surprisingly, the council concluded that iconoclasm had been a huge mistake that kicked off a Byzantine counter-reformation against the iconoclasts. who resisted the return of religious imagery just as vehemently as their opponents had resisted the destruction of icons when Constantine the 6th finally came of age he declared himself an iconoclast Irene demonstrated the strength of her faith by overthrowing him and in 797 ordered her son's mutilation by gouging out his eyes he was maimed so severely that he died of his wounds soon thereafter Irene then proclaimed herself empress and continued her quest to undo iconoclasm and reintroduce religious imagery Number 14. Fred Gunda of Swasson cast out her infant son to avoid catching an illness from him. Fred Gunda might have been history's most cartoonishly evil mothers. She started off a servant of Odovera, wife of Frankish King Shilperic I of Swasson, and eventually caught the king's eye. She convinced him to divorce Odovera and dump her into a convent, then became Shilperic's mistress. Shilperic eventually set Fred Gunda aside to marry a noblewoman, Elswintha. that turned out to be bad news for the new queen. Fred Gunda personally strangled Galswintha to death. Fred Gunda then resumed her place as Shilperic's side as his official mistress and queen consort. In 580, a dysentery epidemic afflicted King Shilperic, as well as two of his sons with Ferdi Gunda. She took that as a sign of divine displeasure for her sins and made some efforts to mend her ways, but she reverted to cartoonish evil while besieged in a city. Another of her sons, a babe in arms, became seriously ill. worried that she might catch whatever her kid had fred gunda ordered him cast away and let him die number 13 fred gunda tried to crush her daughter's head abandoning her baby to die was at least driven by fred gunda's animal instinct for survival and the desire ignoble as it might be to save herself not so what she did to her own daughter rigunth that worthy a chip off the old block was just as scheming as her other but not as wily and ruthless as she grew into beautiful young woman Rigunth took to bragging that she would soon take her mother's place as the king's mistress and queen consort. She should have recalled what her mother had done to other rivals before running off the mouth like that. A jealous Fred Gunda responded by trying to crush her daughter's head, as described by a medieval chronicler. Fred Gunda was jealous of her own daughter Rigunth, who continually declared that she should be mistress in her place. She waited her opportunity and under the pretense of magnanimity took her to the treasure room and showed her the king's jewels in a large chest, feigning fatigue. She exclaimed I am weary. Put thou in thy hand and take out what thou mayest find. The mother thereupon forced down the lid on her neck and would have killed her had not the servants finally rushed to her aid. Number 12. Shi Huangdi's mother plotted to depose her son in favor of her lover's children. China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huangdi, was reportedly not the biological son of his royal father, but that of an adventurer named Lu Pu Wei. The story goes that Lu Pu Wei's mistress had caught the eye of a royal prince. who fell passionately in love with her to keep on his good side lu pu wei agreed to pass his mistress on to the prince the latter married her and she became known there after as lady jiao however the prince got more than what he had bargained for lady jiao was already pregnant by lu pu wei and eventually gave birth to the future emperor her husband eventually ascended the throne but died soon thereafter leaving the crown to his son with lu pu wei the prime minister and lady jiao the dowager queen acting as regents The duo resumed their affair but by 241 BC, Lu Pu Wei figured he needed to end his affair with the Dowager Queen. It had been manageable while the future Qin Shi Huang was a child, but the king was now nearing adulthood. If he found out that his prime minister was sleeping with his mother, things would get ugly. However, Lady Jiao figured that Lu Pu Wei had simply fallen out of love with her to get her mind off him. The enterprising adventurer decided to find the Dowager Queen another lover. He succeeded way more than he had ever imagined. As Lady Jiao fell so hard for her new lover that she eventually plotted with him against her own son. Number 11. Deposing Huangdi for a Hongbo. 
to take his mistress' mind off him, and focus her affections on another, Lu Pu Wei searched for just the right replacement lover who would appeal to Shi Huangdi's mother, the Lady Zhao, he found what he was looking for in a certain Lao Ai, an extremely well-hung young man, whom he presented to the king's mother, one look at Lao Ai's big bat, and Lady Zhao fell for him, hard as in, head over heels besotted, so Lu Pu Wei had all of Lao Ai's hair plucked out to disguise him as a eunuch, and moved him into the Dowager Queen's palace, it was a passionate love affair, the queen was soon pregnant by Lao Ai, and moved to the countryside to have his babies, she also gifted him with a palace, complete with hundreds of attendants. It went to Lao Ai's head, however, and he eventually began conspiring with the besotted queen dowager to have their son ascend the Qin throne, by deposing her elder son and current king, word got back to Shi Huangdi, who so far had turned a blind eye to his mother's affair, however, the threat to his throne spurred him into action, and he ordered Lao Ai's arrest, the latter responded by launching a rebellion, but it was easily crushed and ended with Lao Ai's head, and that of his children hung in public, as to the king's mother, Lady Zhao was placed under house arrest for the rest of her life. Number 10. Magda Goebbels doomed her children to demonstrate her devotion to Hitler. In 1930, Magda Rachel joined the Nazi party as a volunteer, after a stint at her local branch, she was moved to party headquarters in Berlin, where she was tasked with overseeing Joseph Goebbels' private papers, it did not take long before the smooth-talking Goebbels made his move, and by early 1931, he and Magda were dating, they were married later that year with Hitler acting as best man, when the Nazis secured power, Magda's husband became one of Germany's most powerful man, and one of Hitler's most trusted and devoted advisors. Magda and Joseph Goebbels had six children, who became Hitler's favorites, however, when the Third Reich finally came crashing down in 1945, with Red Army soldiers storming into the German capital, Hitler chose to end his life rather than surrender, Magda and Joseph Goebbels decided to demonstrate their devotion to the Fuhrer by following him into death, however, Magda was not content with just her own death, and that of her husband, she decided to also kill her six children, ranging in age from 4 to 12. Number 9. Magda murders her children. Having convinced herself of the need, and even the desirability of killing her kids, Magda Goebbels turned a deaf ear to all offers to smuggle her children to safety, as to how she would go about killing her children, Magda decided upon knocking them out with morphine, then finishing them off by crushing cyanide capsules between their teeth. On May 1, 1945, one day after Hitler's suicide, Magda with the help of an SS doctor, administered morphine to her kids, then killed them with cyanide, a few hours later she and Joseph Goebbels committed suicide. The most horrific of the Goebbels children's death was that of Hitler's favorite girl, Helga, it seems that the morphine did not keep her under for long, she became aware at some point that her siblings were being murdered, by having poisonous capsules crushed between their teeth, and resisted having the same done to her, Helga's last moments were spent in a ferocious fight, as her mother and an SS member forced poison into her mouth, an autopsy, and photographs taken of her face, showed heavy bruising, her jaw also seems to have been broken during the struggle to force cyanide into her mouth. Number 8. Cheng Ai Sao married her son. Cheng Ai Sao worked the South China in the early 19th century, and was probably history's most successful pirate, a former prostitute, she married a powerful pirate and inherited his outlaw realm upon his death, However, she was no mere widow who lucked into an inheritance, her own piratical legacy far exceeded that of her departed husband, Cheng commanded tens of thousands of outlaws, and despite challenging the British Empire, the Portuguese Empire as well as the Chinese Qing Dynasty, she survived to end her days in peaceful retirement. She was good at choosing capable subordinates, the most formidable of whom was Cheng Po Tsai, who was kidnapped in childhood by Cheng and her husband, pressed into their crews, the teenager excelled in the new career suddenly thrust upon him, and rose swiftly through the ranks, before long, Cheng had become the Cheng's favorite, and was adopted by them as their son, when Cheng's husband drowned, the widow took over his pirate fleet, married her adopted son and made him her right-hand man. Number 7. Cheng Ai Sao and her son husband terrorized the waves. The scale of piratical activities carried out by Cheng Ai Sao and her son husband Cheng, exceeded anything seen in the Caribbean during the golden age of piracy, at the height of her power, Cheng controlled over 300 sailing ships, and commanded up to 80,000 pirates. To put that into perspective, the Caribbean age of piracy's most notorious villain, Blackbeard, never commanded more than four ships and 300 men. With her massive armada, Cheng dominated the shipping lanes around southern China, and held them for ransom, her depredations finally compelled the Chinese authorities, to launch a massive campaign to eradicate piracy and restore order. In 1810, seeing the writing on the wall, 
Cheng accepted a pardon, she abandoned piracy, turned her back on her son husband and returned to her hometown, there, she opened a gambling den and whorehouse, and died peacefully in bed in 1844. Number 6. Elizabeth Bottery neglected her kids to focus on torture and murder. The one good thing that could be said about Countess Elizabeth Bottery to accent as a mother, is that she did not murder her six kids, however, she set them aside to murder hundreds of others, indeed, she owns the Guinness Book of World Records record for most prolific female murderess, having tortured and killed hundreds of young women between 1585 and 1609, she was probably history's most vicious female serial killer. She was born into a distinguished aristocratic family that ruled Transylvania, and was raised amidst wealth and privilege, Bottery received an excellent education from top-notch tutors, and at age 12 was betrothed to a prominent Hungarian aristocrat, a year later, however she got pregnant by a commoner, so her fiancé had her lover castrated, then torn to pieces and fed to the dogs, Elizabeth gave birth to a daughter and promptly cast her aside, she wed her betrothed in 1575, but continued to cuckold him. Number 5. Elizabeth Bottery tortured and murdered hundreds of young women. Elizabeth Bottery developed a taste for sadism, and sometime around 1585 began torturing and killing young girls, she started off with servants at her castle, then serf girls from surrounding peasant villages, and eventually the daughters of local gentry, sent to her castle to receive an aristocratic education and learn courtly manners, witnesses reported seeing Bottery stabbing her victims, piercing their lips with needles, burning them with red-hot irons, biting their breasts and faces and cutting them with scissors, some of her victims were beaten to death, while others were starved. In winter, she got a kick out of sending serving girls out in the snow, where she had water poured over them and watched them getting turned into human icicles, in summer, she would often coat her victims in honey, and watch them get tormented by ants, bees and other insects, she bathed in her victims' blood and drank it, in the belief that it would preserve her youth, the exact number of Bathory's victims is unknown, but estimates range as high 650, rumors eventually got out, and the authorities conducted an investigation, in 1610, Bottery and four of her accomplices were arrested, her accomplices were tried and convicted, and three were executed, Bottery, however never faced trial, instead, she was quietly sent to a castle, and confined to a windowless room until her death, five years later. Number 4. Cleopatra III had no hesitation about acknowledging she had a favorite child. Even if a mother has a favorite kid, she's expected to at least go through the motions of saying that she loves all her kids just the same, not so, with the Ptolemaic dynasty's Cleopatra III, the Ptolemies were probably history's most dysfunctional ruling family, and Ptolemaic family intrigues complicated the reign of Ptolemy IX Soter, among other things, the Ptolemies had an established family tradition of incest, so this Ptolemy married his sister Cleopatra IV, when his father, Ptolemy VIII Potbelly died in 116 BC, Ptolemy IX's mother and the reigning queen, Cleopatra III made him co-regent, however, Ptolemy IX was not her favorite son and she only chose him, because of public pressure from the citizens of Alexandria. So Cleopatra III worked out the resulting resentment by forcing Ptolemy IX, to divorce his sister-wife Cleopatra IV, and replace her with her own sister and Ptolemy IX's aunt, Cleopatra Selene I, Ptolemy IX's sister and ex-wife fled Egypt to the neighboring Hellenistic Seleucid Kingdom, where she married Antiochus IX and became queen consort in 114 BC, her reign proved brief, however, and she was murdered during a spat of dynastic turmoil. As to Ptolemy IX, Cleopatra III accused him of having tried to murder her and deposed him in 107 BC, his place was taken by his brother and Cleopatra III's favorite son, Alexander who ascended the throne as Ptolemy X. Number 3. Cleopatra III got no gratitude from her favorite son. After engineering the deposition of her son Ptolemy IX, and replacing him on the throne with a more favored son, Ptolemy X, Cleopatra III settled in to enjoy her twilight years as queen and co-regent, unfortunately for her, that enjoyment did not last as long as she might have hoped, because the favorite son, whom Cleopatra III had made king demonstrated his ingratitude in the most visceral way possible, six years into their joint rule, Ptolemy X tired of his mother, and had her murdered in 101 BC. After murdering his mother, Ptolemy X made his wife, Cleopatra Bernice III queen and co-regent, an incestuous tie being a Ptolemaic norm by this point, Ptolemy X's wife Bernice III was also his niece the daughter of his brother, the Ptolemy IX who had been deposed by their mother Cleopatra III, a popular uprising in 88 BC overthrew Ptolemy X, who fled to Syria, he returned with a mercenary army, whom he paid by looting and melting down the golden sarcophagus of Alexander the Great, that infuriated the Alexandrians, 
who deposed and chased him out of Egypt again, he was killed while trying to flee, and was succeeded by his brother and father-in-law, the previous king Ptolemy IX who had been deposed by his mother Cleopatra III. Number 2. Wu Zetian was hell on her kids. Ancient China's Confucian worldview held that women were unfit to rule, Wu Zetian paid no attention to that bit of Confucianism, she ran China unofficially as an empress consort, then empress dowager and finally as official empress, a strong, wily and ruthless woman, the tale of her rise to power and how she held on to it, could have taught Machiavelli some new tricks, considering that she killed one of her own children, deposed another and usurped the power of a third, even Machiavelli might have thought Wu Zetian had crossed a line or two. She was born into a wealthy family, and had an open-minded father who saw to it that she received a good education, encouraging her to read and develop her mind, that was unusual for her day and age, but fortunately for Wu, her father was not too hung up on convention, as a result, she grew up well versed in literature, music, history, politics, and governmental affairs, she was also drop-dead gorgeous, and at age 14 she was taken into Emperor Taizong's harem as a concubine. Number 1. Wu Zetian killed her own daughter in a political ploy. Wu Zetian's beauty and brain served her well, the emperor was not into intelligent women, so he did not favor Wu, however, being an intelligent woman she was able to look ahead, so she had an affair with the aging emperor's son and eventual successor, the son was not intimidated by smart women, and when he became emperor Jaezong after his father's death, he made Wu his favorite concubine, he eventually elevated her to his second wife, a huge jump in the imperial harem's rankings, not content to remain second fiddle, however Wu reportedly strangled her own infant daughter, and framed the emperor's first wife for the death, the intrigue worked and Wu became the emperor's official consort. Wu's power grew, as she steadily eliminated opponents, when Emperor Jaezong died in 683, Wu became Empress Dowager and regent running the empire in the name of her son, Emperor Thongzong, when Thongzong ascended the throne in his own right in 684, he tried to buck his mother and get out from under her thumb, he lasted only six weeks on the throne, before Wu had him deposed, exiled and replaced with her youngest son, whom she made Emperor Ruizong, she maintained all power in her own hands and six years later, she tired of bothering with any pretense about who actually ran China, and made Ruizong relinquish the throne, Wu officially proclaimed herself Empress Regnant, and ruled in that capacity until she was overthrown in 705. 